Hey guys, it's Gimme Trades here. Uh, this is going to be my first market tip video that I'm posting out to you guys as a way of saying thanks for all the support that you guys given me, uh, for all the people that subscribe, for all the people that liked, uh, sending me trades, just helping me grow my channel. Uh, basically, a lot of people have been asking me to make a kind of uh, market tip video uh, on how to make pucks. So instead of responding back with a message, uh, I thought that maybe I'd just make a video and just link them to this video and to my how to make millions of puck videos so that that will be out and that that's crazy I mean uh, that market or uh, the how to make a million pucks has already reached 6.5 thousand 6.5 K views and it has like 65 likes it's getting like 150 views a day and it's amazing how how much it's blown up uh, I'll link it in the description if you haven't seen it yet I was thinking about redoing it and maybe uh, updating it because there are some uh, things I need to change but uh, anyways uh, moving along, this video is just tips uh, for the more more experienced uh, marketeers on HUT. There are some tips for the newbies, so don't leave if you're a newbie. Uh, I included some pretty good stuff that most people haven't heard of yet, uh, just from my experience and what I've seen in the market. But I'm going to break this video up into small segments because I wrote down a whole ton of uh, tips on a piece of paper and I have to kind of break them all down. So. It's all on top of my head, so I'm just going to start saying them, so here we go. Alright, number one, do not buy packs. I know that uh, packs seem pretty enticing. You see all these advertisements for packs. Uh, you go to the store, there's always these new premium gold uh, rare player packs. And from my experience, I am pretty sure from other people, I'm pretty sure YouTubers can uh, vouch for me that packs are a huge waste of money. Like even if you're spending uh, Microsoft points or if you're spending with pucks, you're always gonna lose. It's all it's like a casino. You're always gonna lose with uh, with the uh, packs. Like you might get lucky, but most of the time you're gonna get hooked onto buying packs just like me, and you're just gonna waste a whole bunch of pucks. So I, I suggest you don't even get started with pucks or packs. I mean, uh, don't waste your pucks with that because uh, there's totally a, there's a lot of other things you can do with pucks other than to buy packs. So that's my number one tip. Uh, it's up there, so uh, you should follow that. Uh, you should follow it. So, anyways, next tip. All right, second tip. Most people already do this, but make sure that you utilize all 30 spaces in your trade pile. I can't stress that enough. I know a lot of people have like 10, 15 items selling the trade pile, but those are perfect times where you can go out buy some change team cards for very cheap and just throw them up into the trade pile and still make an extra couple hundred pucks. Uh, per each one uh, you don't want to waste your time and to be as efficient as possible use up all those 30 spaces you're gonna need them especially when I'm playing now uh, I use 30 spaces on both accounts so I have like 60 trade pile, trade pile spaces and I don't even think that's enough so make sure that you utilize all 30 spaces uh, you'll make the most amount of pucks with that method so on to tip number three all right tip number three uh, it's nothing new but uh, make sure that you check your trade offers. Uh, people ask me how I made that many pucks. Like they accuse me of scamming, but really, uh, it's not even buying and selling players that I'm making my pucks with. It's really just the trade offers. Uh, before I started YouTube, I got trades all the time, and people say to stop like overpaying me. I see in the comments people posting like don't overpay lamb chops or something like that, and really, uh, it's. People usually overpay for trades, like that's how a trade works usually. Like, usually people that want to collect, say a Datsuk or a Vetchkin, they are willing to pay more than what his value is to get him, you know what I mean? Uh, it's it just reality, that, that that's happens in the market and in the daily life. Uh, that's why I get that many pucks, especially when my account's mainly just for trades. You can see from my name, Gimme Trades, uh, you know, that's how I make my pucks. People overpay for my players. You've seen it in some of my videos, like, I got ridiculous offers, and it, it happened before I even made YouTube videos, that's why I started posting, you know, I didn't get my 99 Crosby and all those people before uh, I made my YouTube videos, like, I got trades all the time, even before making this YouTube channel, so check your trade offers, it's really important, uh, because that is the real money maker, it's not buying and selling, it's really just checking your trade offers, and just picking out which ones are the best, make sure to do your research on the market, uh, make sure that you aren't uh, over overvaluing players or undervaluing players because you could really make a lot of money with this 
uh, with this method. So this kind of ties into my fourth tip, so be right back. All right, tip number four. Uh, this kind of ties in with the last tip uh, to not overvalue your players. And you might not be overvaluing your players at the current moment, but before investing in your player, make sure he is not doing well in real life. If you're going to invest in start of the week players, make sure he's not doing well in real life. Why? Because, say, start of the week Chara, for example. I remember uh, he was going for 350k at one point, or 400k, and people were willing to pay that price. And then he was doing well, people were still buying and selling start of the week Charles for 400k. Once he came out of pack, he dropped to 250k, 200 to 250k. And that's just one of the examples of uh, how EA kind of releases players, start of the week players, into the market and dropping player value. So you have to stay on top of the NHL game, make sure you know uh, the values of players, and also making sure that you're updating on actual NHL stats online because um, that is really uh, important to trading. The exact opposite goes for base cards. Uh, if the player is doing really, really well in real life, then if he's released in the next team of the week, then that base card is going to go up in price. You might be wondering why. Uh, when a new team of the week gets updated, say a start of the week Zetterberg's on it, no regular Zetterbergs, the 87 overall, will ever be released in that pack for that week. And that's why uh, uh, Zetterbergs would go up and start of the week Zetterbergs would go down in value. So you got to make sure that you're on top of that. Um, that's why investing in base cards is always the best choice because those don't usually vary in price. It goes around like it varies by 5 to 10 percent depending on uh, if the market is dead or but usually it does not change. Uh, base cards are the safest way to go. If you're going to get trades, make sure that you get base cards because those are the most wanted, especially with uh, collecting. Uh, people like to finish their collections and people just like playing with those players and they don't want to pay for like extra 100k for a start of the week version of it. So make sure that uh, you uh, watch out for base cards because those always go for more and watch out for start of the week cards because those can always drop in price anytime and make sure that you're always updated on the team of the week. So. That's my tip number four. Tip number five. Uh, this is kind of related to tip number four. Um, I said that you shouldn't buy uh, Star of the Week players or you should watch out for them. Not necessarily. Um, a great time to buy Team of the Week players is two or three days right after a pack. The reason why this is a good time to buy players is because uh, usually they don't, get released, they don't get released twice in the same week or the next week. And that's why you want to invest in those players later. Um, you might see uh, players being undervalued a lot during when packs are out and that's the perfect chance to buy a pack or buy that player. Uh, usually I buy those players one day after that pack or the pack is left. So if there's a mega pack for two days, make sure that mega pack ends and then buy it in, during that day or two days after it's gone. Uh, the reason why is because usually people hold on to these start of the week players thinking that it's worth something. Maybe, maybe going to hold on to it, but then when they try selling in the market, there's 20 or 30 other, other ones. So people are constantly trying to compete with each other to get the lowest price. And that's where you come in and you get the cheapest price. So that's tip number five. Moving on to tip number six. All right, tip number six. So a lot of people have been asking me when the best time to buy and sell players is. And, you know, it could be all over the place. People have different experiences. But from what I've experienced for the past four or five months, is that the best time to sell players is between 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to relate this all to Eastern Standard Time. So if you're not Eastern Standard Time, then you have to convert it uh, accordingly. So, uh, and the other time that I've been, uh, that I sell really well in is 9.30 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. And just to get into those time slots, remember that you have to do one hour before. If you're doing an hour trade day, then you have to do it one hour before that those times. So if you're gonna do a 5 p.m., if you wanna get into that 5 p.m. interval, then you have to sell it at 4 p.m. Or if you're trying to get into that 9.30 p.m. interval, then you have to sell it at 8.30. And usually those times, I get the most trade offers. Uh, you can plan your day accordingly, according to those uh, time slots. Uh, I know that usually I do my trade days at around 4.30 to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And usually that's when I get the most trades. Uh, I don't know, that, it just seems like that uh, the market thrives during those times. But that's my tip, 
Uh, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, moving on to tip number seven. All right, guys, tip number seven. Uh, this tip actually applies in real life and kind of applies to this market hut. I've been doing it all the time and I find that my players get bought out a lot more often than if I were to do my other method. But basically, uh, this one's a psychology pricing kind of method. Uh, I see all the time people selling, say, Chara for 50000 and then they buy it now for 50050 And that doesn't make sense to me while you can price them at 49900 and 49950 Visually speaking, it looks better to see, the, see it in the 49 zone than in the 50 zone. People assume that it's at the 50000 and usually when people see 49000 that's what they're going to price it at. Uh, usually, if you're selling a Chara, for example, at 49000 uh, try pricing it at 49950 Get that extra 1K puck, that 950 pucks, because people can't really differentiate between uh, 950 pucks and 49,000, you know, that interval. So make sure you price it in between there. You'll get more items bought out. I really utilize that trade pile overnight and sell it using the, those marketing tactics. Uh, say if you're buying and selling a player, say you're selling a player for 54,000, then you might as well sell them for 53,900 and 53,950. It just looks more visually appealing. You get to sell more players. So try that method out. I know it kind of works for me at least. So moving on to the next tip. All right, tip number eight. Uh, a lot of people actually don't know this, which I'm pretty surprised about. Uh, I kind of figured this out very early in the game, but there is a 5% uh, uh, puck fee for all your players or all the trades that you get. Uh, I remember one time trying to transfer over 100,000 pucks and I came out with, I think, 95,000 pucks. And it's a natural thing that EA does to prevent scamming and prevent all this stuff. But uh, I'm not totally sure if it's for scamming. I just kind of assumed that it was. But anyways, make sure that you price your players properly. Uh, I know a lot of people buy like Chara. I'm using Chara all the time, but it's just easier to for me at least. But you, uh, it doesn't make sense to buy a Chara for fifty four thousand and then to sell them at fifty five thousand because you're gonna lose five percent of whatever you, you were going to sell them at. So to check out how much uh, he's gonna go for, how to make profit off him. Uh, all you need to do really is to put the buying price, uh, whatever you bought it at, say you bought Char for 55000 multiply it by 1.05, that includes the 5%, and just make sure you sell over that limit and you'll never lose any pucks. So that's my tip number eight. Uh, and moving on to the next tip. Tip number nine, uh, I see a lot of people doing this and it's not that big of a deal, but a lot of people have emotional connections with players. Uh, I know that I have emotional connections with say Toronto Maple Leaf players because you know I'm a Toronto Maple Leaf fan and I usually like to hold on to them but since the beginning of the game you know that player prices were extremely high in the beginning and they slowly slowly dipped down and I remember Castle used to go for 60-70k in the beginning of the game now he's dropped down to 25-30k and player prices naturally drop just because of the, the amount of magnitude of players that keep getting added into the market and the amount of people are just selling them so it's really not that good to hold on to players and that's kind of my marketing tip do not hold on to your players make sure you keep your trade pile and your team kind of always cycling through uh, your trade pile make sure that you're always selling them because you can always pick them up for cheaper I've already um, I made a lot of mistakes with buying and selling uh, just know that you can always buy and sell you can always buy players for cheaper than what you bought it at or what you think you can buy it at because when a new start of the week comes out or a new uh, pack comes out People like to dump cards once again. Like, there's uh, these rare occasions where maybe like Start of the Week uh, Datsuk uh, doesn't get released into a pack ever, or Start of the Week Cobalt Truck never gets released back into the market. And you just gotta kind of, just gotta, you gotta account for that, you know? Uh, don't hold on to players that long. You might get lucky with people like Start of the Week Cobalt Truck. I remember he was going for 700k, and now he's like 1.4, 1.5 mil, but. Don't hold on to players, that's my tip. Uh, the more you keep cycling players through your trade pile, eventually you'll be able to get all the players that you want. So that's tip number eight. All right, tip number nine, I think. Uh, I think this is my last tip. But anyways, uh, the, this last tip has to deal with just uh, from what I've experienced. Uh, basically, my tip is don't waste your time with steals, all right? Well, screen turned off, but... Uh, don't waste your time with steals. Don't try the 59 minute mark. 
don't try buying out players uh, when people put them up for cheap. As in, like, uh, don't try going a bidding war and try to get for cheap because it never happens. Um, I'm going to say that tomorrow and then all these players are going to go for 100 like Crosby. But uh, just make sure that you don't waste your time because I feel like I make more pucks buying and selling players constantly uh, using the buy it nows instead of trying to do that 59 minute mark and the and the watch or the bidding war method it just does not work for me at least unless you're really consistent and more very uh, persistent it doesn't work because uh, people know their values and people are willing to bid up to that value until they're not even making money anymore it's just a waste of time in my opinion so I suggest you don't waste your time uh, buy players that are rare in the market uh, that people really want like um, I know that start of the week Dakupal was going uh, he wasn't released in a pack he was only released for a week I think and there weren't that many in the market so I picked up a very cheap uh, start of the week Dakupal for I think 130k and I sold him for one, over 160k and really you can make more profit just buying out players for very cheap or that you think is really cheap and then just reselling them. Uh, what I also try to do is uh, uh, I buy and sell players uh, in in, cl in clumps. So what I mean by that is in the trading pot or the market. Sometimes I see two buy nows of uh, pretty cheap players, and then you know the rest are very expensive. That is a really good time. That I see that as an opportunity more than a deterrent. You want to buy out those two players and then resell it at around that price but lower than what they are selling at and usually you'll be able to resell them in 12 hours or 24 hours whatever the time period is you'll sell them back for even more uh, don't be afraid to buy multiple players because usually you can always make your money back uh, just put one at a time and you make those players even more rare just by doing that so that's tip number nine and i'm going to move on to the conclusion of this video all right guys this is the conclusion of my video I hope you enjoyed this video. I spent a lot of time prepping up this video. I even wrote a script for it. Uh, I wrote down all these notes, spent like 45 minutes writing them. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this. I just can't thank you enough of how far I've reached my, ch how far I've actually expanded my channel. I couldn't have gone far this far without all your guys' help and help from my friends on YouTube, like X Tech NHL, and just a lot of other people that actually like my videos and. Give me shoutouts. Thanks to all you guys. You guys really helped me out. Uh, eventually, I will make another video in better quality for my change team method. I'll release a couple more of those methods soon. Uh, I'll make them more thorough so you, they're actually better. But anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and see you guys later. Bye.